here we really celebrate a very unique culture and of course its legacy. The people who lived here, as you all know, they were master builders and architects. Important to realize they were also master farmers and we actually call them uh, peaceful farmers. They mainly did their farming up here on the Mesa top. Remember we are talking the Stone Age here. So, of course, as you all probably know, they did have a sustainable agricultural system that lasted almost a thousand years. But remember, they had absolutely no modern technology, no science to help them. We say that when they created all of their agriculture, they basically had one tool, and that was a wooden digging stick. Because of the lifestyle here, as you might imagine, there had to be a huge amount of community and cooperation. You actually even see that within the architecture. And of course, these people had a very close relationship with Father Sky and with Mother Earth. The people who lived here, now you all know, uh, probably we don't use that word Anasazi anymore, throw that word away. We now call them the ancestral what? Puebloans. Puebloans. And a lot of visitors don't realize their descendants are very much alive and they live close by in New Mexico and Arizona. Arizona, my home state, they live in the north. Anybody know what they're called? Hopi. The Hopi. There's a great expression I learned last year. Don't worry, be Hopi. <laughs> <laughs> the descendants, the Puebloans, also live pretty much up and down the famous Rio Grande Valley in New Mexico. Basically, from north to south, that would be between Taos, Santa Fe, Albuquerque, to the west as well. And they live there in now about 19 different villages or pueblos. And of course, you can go and visit them. They come here often. This is sacred, of course. It is the home of their ancestry. When they come, they can go down in a dwelling and they can <laughs> sprinkle sacred cornmeal as a blessing. They can even leave a prayer feather as an offering. And the idea of the fair prayer feather is interesting. The idea of the feather is that eventually it will find its way up to the clouds. The clouds are where the cloud people live. And the cloud people are the spirits of the departed. Community and cooperation here, so much of it, and mastery and mystery. The classic three Native American crops, anyone know what they're called? Corn. Three sisters, corn, beans, beans squash. squash. Great, great way to illustrate community and cooperation. Corn, as we all know, grows up into stalks. Beans need something to twine around, like a corn stalk. And then beans are a nitrogen fixer for the soil, and that's what corn needs. And then squash, great big leaves. They shade all of the soil, so it doesn't need as much water. You're all on vacation here, so of course do some imagining on your visit. First of all, could you have survived here, <laughs> as these people did in the Stone Age? Could you have figured out that this tree, which we call the pinyon pine, kind of a normal looking bark, sap is in there. They could gather that, they could line their beautiful baskets it. to make them watertight. And then this unusual looking tree, gray shaggy bark, that is the Utah juniper. They could use that of course for construction, but they also learned that the bark is very absorbent. So what could they use it for for their babies? Diapers. Diapers, yes. And then one of my favorite things is how did they create their paintbrushes? I'm not going to tell you now. If I don't forget, I'll tell you down below. <laughs> so think about could you have survived here? Your daily chores, prehistoric, of course, involved our three basic human needs, water, food, shelter, water, food, shelter. That was your mantra every day. And then think about how your day was not revolving, of course, around a clock or a watch, but your entire life revolved around Mother Nature, her seasons, and her land. And then you might also think about, well, why did these people leave? They were here for so long, they were so successful. They didn't just vanish, they didn't just disappear. Actually, we list reasons, and we think 
that they are actually things that are going on in our world today. Somebody tell us what's one of the things that caused these people to migrate on. Drought. Drought, yes, one thing. If we list everything, we say overpopulation, climate change, jobs, horrific, repetitive drought, and then degradation of everything around you you needed for your survival. And then you could also throw in whatever you want to call it, some kind of problem in the society, some kind of problem among people. The point really is these people had no choice. They had to migrate on for survival and find a new homeland. But the culture, interestingly, they say in their culture, the spirits simply said it was a simple thing. It was philosophical. They say the spirits simply said about moving on and migrating on, it was time. Questions before we start down? Again, my favorite dwelling, I think you'll see why. Relatively small, especially compared to Cliff Palace. Only about 40 people lived here, only about 38 rooms. They'd be constantly moving around here in pursuit of water, food, and shelter. You would have heard and seen the dogs and the turkeys, of course, the two domesticated animals. And we're going to walk along a lovely path. The first place that we will actually stop before we go up the ladder is where you would have gone to collect your water. Anybody know what that is? Um, a well? <laughs> a well? No, it's not exactly. If you know, don't tell. We'll keep everybody in suspense. <laughs> okay.